The topic of today's video was suggested by one of my patrons, Matas, and he asked me regarding my opinion for different kind of measurements for patellofemoral instability or dysplasia. And we will now have a look at this question and then we pick out a few points and try to answer them. <laughs> So this is the question from Matas and basically it's about patellofemoral dysplasias and he's using Insa Salvati to measure for patella alta and for dysplasias um, regarding the facet asymmetry they are just diagnosing it by eye so just eyeballing it and sometimes they measure the facet angles and TTTG so the tibial tuberosity trochlear groove index they're not using it and his question is do you use any measurements except Insa Salvati index? We will now go through three different points here. So first of all, we will have a look at patella alta and what kind of measurements are useful. And then we will have a look at um, trochlear dysplasia or the depth of the trochlear groove. And lastly, I would shortly give you a few insights regarding the measurements for the TTTG, the tibial tuberosity trochlear groove index. And by the end of the video, I will also give you my honest real opinion about stuff like that. So watch till the end. Before we go into the different kind of measurements, just a few points that you really need to understand regarding the biomechanics of the patellofemoral joint. You can see here the femoral trochlea, the groove here is one of the key stabilizers of the patella. And the patella nicely sits in this groove and it's like a track where the patella goes if we flex the knee. Now you can immediately see here in a more or less stretched out knee that the patella is not really sitting inside the groove. You can also appreciate it here where we have portions of the um, patellar articular surface are not articulating with any kind of cartilage here at the prefemoral region where we have the prefemoral fat pad etc. So what actually is happening if we start to bend our knee the patella slides into this sulcus or trochlear groove here and about with 20 or 30 degrees of flexion it's really sitting or starts to sit deep in this sulcus and is therefore then here stabilized all the way down if we start to bend our knee. Now this immediately makes uh, easy to understand why a trochlear dysplasia so if we have a very small lateral facet it's a risk factor for patellar dislocations because we don't have this tracking of the patella. The other thing that also uh, follows this is if we have a patella alta, so meaning the patella is high up here, then it needs more time or the knee needs more flexion for actually putting the patella inside the trochlear groove. So these are two key factors to understand. So here on a radiograph, just the same points again, you can see we have the trochlear groove here, we have the patella, and then if we have a patella alta, it's higher up and we have a higher risk uh, of dislocations because it's the patella is more unstable and not really guided at the beginning of knee flexion and therefore more susceptible to lateral dislocations. How do we measure patella alta? There is a, a variety of different type of measurements that you can do. Uh, the most frequently ones are Insal Salvati index and Gattung Deschamps index. It doesn't really matter which one you use, just use the one that your surgeon is also using. I think that's one of the messages. And if you look at these two, the main difference here is the measurement to the tibial tuberosity because if you have a Oskutschlatter disease or somebody who had surgery at this level, it might not so easy to really find this point to measure and therefore we have a, a, a strange measurement then. That's the advantage of the Gattun Desha index, which is not related to the morphology of the tibial tuberosity. The other thing is sometimes you have these very large inferior poles of the patella and that might also affect your measurements if you use the Insal Salvati index. And that's an advantage also of the Gattun Desha index. However, it's sometimes not so easy to really appreciate the length of the articular surface here. So if you want to know the, the real points and the real description with all the cutoff values, I really advise you to go on Google because I don't have the time in this video to explain everything from the ground up. So keep in mind that the original studies used the knee in a slight flexion of 30 degrees uh, for the assessment of these measurements. And if you have a straight knee, 
uh, your values might actually be a little bit different. Then you can also apply these measurements on uh, knee MRI and you can just use the same criteria. You just use um, these different lines and you get this index here, Carton Deschamps, and if you want the uh, Incel Salvati, you do something like that. But there are two problems here on MRI. If you scroll through, it's not so easy to see where you actually should measure because it's obviously a 3D uh, volume. For example, the articular surface, the lowest point, differs on which section you measure. And also in older knees, if you have osteoarthritis, then it might also affect your measurements. Now, there were studies that said that if you use these indexes, or especially the Incel Salvati index on MRI, then you need to increase your cutoff values and uh, compared to the conventional radiographs for the diagnosis of patella alta. And some uh, said in the range of 0 0.01 to 0 0.13, so a slight increase of the cutoff value if you want to measure it on MRI. So in Mata's initial question, he also mentioned that you can measure the angles of the facet, etc. Um, what I do sometimes is measure the depth of the groove. And you can do this if you have your coronals, you go three centimeters above the joint line, then you go to the corresponding transverse image. And then here you can measure the depth of the sulcus here. And if that's below three centimeter, you're having a shallow groove maybe you even have a convex uh, surface. So above three millimeter, you should be fine and not have a trochlear dysplasia as in this patient. So this one is normal. So let's see what we have here in this patient. Again, we go three centimeter above the femoral tibial joint line. Then we scroll to the corresponding transverse section. And if you want to measure the depth here, because we have a, um, severe hypoplasia or plasia of the lateral facet so we don't have um, anything to measure really um, and you can immediately see that this is a severe um, dysplasia only if you go further down you start to see a little kind of a groove here but basically this is a severe uh, patellofemoral joint dysplasia as for the tttg the tubular tuberosity trochlear groove index what it actually is is the distance from the center of the trochlear groove to the mid portion of the patellar insertion. And the way you can measure it on transfer sections is uh, very easy. Basically, you make a line perpendicular here to the femoral condyle through the groove here, basically something like this. Then you scroll down and you will see where the patellar tendon is inserting, basically the middle point. Then you have the distance. So the TTTG is basically a distance in millimeters. In this case, it's five millimeters, which is normal. So there is one important point that you should take home from this video. And let's have a look at the measurements here for the TTTG. Here, same patient, there's just a one year difference, but no surgery has been performed. We can measure the TTTG on our CT scan and then the mid portion here of the patellar insertion. Well, it's sometimes not so easy to measure, but we get something like 20 uh, millimeters, which is quite high. And now let's measure the same thing here on our MR. Here we can connect the femoral condyles. We go through the groove, we scroll down. And if we measure the center point here, it's just 11 and even if we go a little bit further down and if you want to be even so we just get 13. So what's happening here in the same patient and that's a key message. Now the CT typically you have your knees fully extended and what's happening with the lower leg if you have the end stage extension you get like a lock-in mechanism where the, the tibia slightly rotates outwards and therefore the TTTG distance is slightly larger in end stage extension as opposed on a knee MRI where you have typically a slight knee flexion. And you can see this here, you have in the knee coil something below the knee to make it more comfortable for the patient. Whereas here on the CT, there is nothing uh, below the knee. So. Um, why is this important? So you will hardly measure 20, 21 millimeters on an MR ever. 
unless you just have a fully extended knee. So the cutoff value should be lower um, for the TTDG in a normal knee MRI. And sometimes we used uh, 16 millimeters as a reference value, whereas with fully extended knees, it's still 20, 21 or 22 millimeters, depending on uh, what your institution is using. Now, Matas, I hope this uh, gave you a little insight here for the different kind of measurements. I don't use Canton Desha, I don't use Insens Alvat Index unless they are specifically asked for, because I think it's an easy measurement and any um, referring physician or surgeon who really knows stuff about the knee, he will measure it himself anyway. So why, I don't uh, spend time with that. The second thing is with the trochlear depth. Sometimes I use it if I'm not sure from eyeballing alone whether it's really a shallow groove or not. So I can use it as a, a criterion, um, but not necessarily giving the value in my report. As for the TTTG, I give the measurements only if it's asked for or maybe in the setting of a patella dislocation. Other than that, I don't measure stuff like that. So I hope this was helpful to you. Go have a look at the article about patellar instability. That one here, I have the link in the description down below. There is explanations for all the different kinds of measurements. Then if you want to ask or make suggestions for future video content, consider to become a patron yourself, just as Matas, and then I can make a video about stuff that you are really interested in. And with that, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't already and see you next week.